Greetings folks and welcome to our screencast on static code analysis. The compiler says you are all good to go but you still aren't convinced because you absolutely want to make sure that your code is reliable and secure. How to do it? This is where static code analysis comes into play. In software development life cycle, static code analysis comes after the phase of implementing your code. The results from static code analysis are reviewed and the necessary defects are fixed in manual inspection. Static code analysis is performed by static analysis tools. Since there are a plethora of static analysis tools in the market, this diagram shows the classification of these tools on various parameters like inputs, technology used, supported programming languages, releases per year, configurability, extensibility, availability, user friendliness, the set of rules that are supported by the tools, etc. Now, let us look at the kind of defects that static analysis tools identify. The following table enumerates 30 different code defects selected from the Common Weaknesses Enumeration Catalog and C Secure Coding Standard. They are generally categorized into 8 broad categories and these form a benchmark for measuring the effectiveness of tools. These tools also expose certain security vulnerabilities. As we can see here, buffer overflow is one of the significant security defects identified. Buffer overflows are often used to crash server software and perform a denial of service attack. This figure shows remotely exploitable buffer overflow vulnerabilities that were found in three server software applications, Bind, FTP and SendMail. We have a table here that characterizes the types of buffer overflows that occur in real programs. These were collected from 14 model test cases. It was found that buffer overflow errors in each of these test cases were similar and in fact sometimes replicated. Hence, it is likely that the static analysis tool would detect all or none of these and so a programmer also would correct all or none of these. Before we jump into the metrics for the effectiveness of static analysis tools, we would like to clarify two terms here, false positive and true positive. False positives are spurious errors that are reported by the tool which are not real bugs. True positives on the other hand are genuine defects. It is understandable that a tool that reports more number of false positives is inefficient. Coming back to the metrics, accuracy. Accuracy is the ratio of correct classifications over the total number of observations. Say we have x correct classifications and y observations. Then accuracy is equals to x over y. Precision. Precision looks very similar to accuracy, but it is, it is not the same. Precision is the ratio of true positives over the total number of reported errors. Recall. Recall is the ratio of true positives over the number of actual errors. Specificity. Specificity is the ratio of total number of true negatives over the sum of true negatives and false positives. And lastly, F measure. F measure provides an aggregate measure for precision and recall, two metrics that possess an intrinsic trade-off. Based on these metrics, an experiment comparing popular C, C++ static analysis tool yielded the following results. In this experiment, Pramati showed the most effective results, followed by C++ test and Combi. Then we have CPP check and Splint. We have chosen C, C++ based static analysis tool, CPP check. This tool is continuously being improved and released by a very active developers community. We will experiment this tool with popular open source projects based on benchmarks and metrics discussed in this screencast. We have some interesting results for you folks. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.